Mapping the Future is a five-year, $10 million Northern Territory government-funded program that identifies and measures the Northern Territory's natural resource capabilities in areas with high development potential. Projects already underway are Western Davenport, Larimer, Catherine, Wadi, and Gun Point. The program provides baseline assessments of the biophysical resources of an area to enable detailed project plans to be generated by development proponents and to ensure sufficient information is available for government to make informed regulatory decisions. The assessments provide an evidence-based tool that will inform government land use planning decisions while enabling community and investors to identify commercial opportunities and de-risk investment decisions, ultimately promoting better economic outcomes. Gunpoint is nearly three times the size of Darwin and Palmerston. The area contains land with a variety of tenure, including pastoral lease, crown land, reserves and freehold land. Gunpoint is an area with significant development potential. With good all-weather access, proximity to market, transport hubs and a local workforce, it is ideally located to support tourism and primary industries such as agriculture, horticulture and aquaculture. When Darwin Port is at full capacity, land use plans have identified Glide Point as a preferred location for a deep water port. Complete with associated industrial facilities and a new community at Murrumjuk to accommodate a local workforce and provide rural residential living. Under Mapping the Future, extensive studies have been conducted to identify and map soil and land capability water availability, vegetation and biodiversity assets. Soil scientists have measured the ground slope, the presence of rocky outcrops and acid sulphate soils, soil depth and drainage throughout the Gun Point Peninsula. Analyzing this data has enabled us to identify land development capabilities across the landscape and map those zones most suited to development from those areas where land management practices would be required prior to development, or those areas where there are significant natural constraints which will impact on development viability. Using a land suitability framework which was developed in conjunction with NT Farmers and the Department of Primary Industries and Resources, we've been able to identify the irrigable crops most suited to the soil and land features. This tool allows landowners to identify crops most suited to their land or, conversely, land that could be developed to grow a particular crop. Extensive field surveys have allowed scientists to map the various vegetation types and identify the locations of those that are particularly significant, such as the sand sheet heaths, dry and wet rainforest, mangroves and wetland vegetation. Surveys also define the occurrence and distribution of threatened flora and fauna species and the habitats they rely on for their survival. With 20% of all NT plant species found at gunpoint, including 10 threatened plant species and 5 threatened animal species, the area is important from a biodiversity perspective. Where there is sufficient data, models have been used to identify those areas likely to contain habitat suitable for species of conservation significance. Integrating survey and model data, we have mapped and classified the areas of greatest biodiversity value from those areas with moderate and low biodiversity value and land already significantly modified by mining, infrastructure or other intensive land use. Areas where studies have been less conclusive will require further investigation prior to development approvals. While the peninsula is bordered by both the Adelaide River to the east and Howard River to the west, both these systems are tidal in their lower reaches. The catchment area of other freshwater drainage systems on the peninsula are very small, and while there are a number of freshwater springs, their yields are not significant. Development based on surface water capture is very limited. Groundwater investigations have improved our understanding of the highly complex hydrogeology of the area. A productive aquifer, part of the Kulpinia Dollarstone Formation that extends well beyond Gun Point, underlies the peninsula. 
Analysis of data from existing and new bores has identified that recharge and depth to groundwater varies across the peninsula, as does water quality, with the highest yielding and most sustainable fit for purpose water supply occurring to the south. Natural compartmentalisation of the aquifer has enabled the aquifer to be broken into a series of management zones. Water has been fully allocated to existing users in the central management zone, which incorporates the western side of the peninsula. However, the northern zone, with limited existing allocation, offers potential for new groundwater-based developments. This groundwater investigation has established the volume of water that could be sustainably allocated while still preserving health of the resource and groundwater dependent ecosystems. Potential future developments on Gun Point Peninsula may have impacts on the marine and coastal environment. New data collection in these environments was outside the resources of mapping the future project. However, to assist future planning and management of the area, a desktop assessment was conducted to identify the current knowledge of biodiversity values within the coastal and marine environments. The assessment highlights information gaps, which assist in setting future research priorities and identifies the data needed to sustainably plan and manage developments into the future. Integrating the soil and land capability, vegetation, biodiversity and water availability information, we've been able to map the development capability classes within the study area. Of the 71,320 hectares assessed, over 33,000 hectares has good to moderate potential for general development, including dry land or rain-fed agriculture or forestry. 37,000 hectares have significant constraints and are not recommended for development. While there is 19,000 hectares of land suitable for irrigation that has access to a productive aquifer, the total sustainable groundwater yield available for allocation is 3.6 gigalitres. This is sufficient to support a modest horticultural district of approximately 720 hectares. Irrigated agriculture in the Litchfield municipality is currently estimated to generate $120 million annually to the local economy. A Gun Point horticultural precinct could potentially increase the land under irrigation by an estimated 10 to 15%. The Gun Point project provides sufficient resource information to enable government to progress from conceptual to detailed planning and appropriate zoning of land that maximises potential for sustainable development while preserving and protecting key environmental assets. As development occurs, a range of infrastructure projects have been proposed for Gun Point, including new road and railway, new port and industrial facility, and a rural residential centre at Murramjuk, and with government keen to make land available at Gun Point, there has been strong interest in commercial developments based on industrial services, tourism, aquaculture, irrigated horticulture and agriculture. For more information related to this project, see dena.nt.gov.au slash development opportunities.